today we want to focus on uh, sharing our faith to share our faith uh, which is also a part of evangelism and we all have many spheres of influence daily we may relate to children co-workers friends students and others on a variety of levels and we need to prepare ourselves to share our faith which will allow us to take fuller advantage of unique position in which god has placed us we need to have a right attitude understanding and the role of prayer considering the use of an evangelistic tool set the stage for successful witnessing as with any skill practice improves how well you do and how comfortable you are doing it and so we need to follow certain guidelines in order to share our faith we need to step out in faith trusting god with the results first thing is having the right kind of attitude having the right kind of attitude and we read in matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 Matthew 28 18 to 20 and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age for some of us sharing our faith may cause us to feel afraid part of this fear may come from a lack of training but part of it can also be a result of misplaced faith you see our faith is to witness our faith to witness cannot be in our ability to persuade but rather in the power of god his word and his work in the life of the unbeliever we must remember that the successful witnessing is simply taking the initiative to share christ in the power of the holy spirit and leaving the results to god you see god is the initiator as well as the means of salvation in a person's heart he is the one who gives us a desire for spiritual knowledge and draws us closer to the point of salvation or he is the lord who gives the desire to a person for spiritual knowledge and draw that person to the point of salvation is it this process may take a few minutes or a lifetime and your conversation with such person may be a time of decision or nearly a step along the way is it regardless of the goal of your sharing is to leave that person with both a better understanding of the gospel and a positive impression of christians so that he or she remains open to the other opportunities in which god can work on the other hand do not allow fear to inhibit you from giving such a person an opportunity to make a decision to trust Christ if he or she is ready you see and so we need to maintain a proper balance between the fact that salvation is crucial and urgent and the reality that not everyone is ready for conversion at the same time or has the same amount of insight into the personal implication of the gospel so when you set out to share gospel or when you set out to witness pray before you go you say pray pray to god you say pray for opportunities to share and pray for specific people asking god to give them a hunger for spiritual knowledge when an opportunity presents itself acknowledge your complete dependence on him on god and praise god for what he is about to do and then proceed with joy knowing that god is in control of the situation 
one more thing you need to keep in mind is while conversation alone may work well, you see. In one on one sharing, many people find that use of a visual aid helps in both understanding and retention. A Bible can be used but may not always be available or may appear intimidating to the other person. An effective alternative tool is, is to use a evangelistic tract, you see. When you use an evangelistic tract, you can be able to present the gospel maybe more specifically and more clearly and you are better prepared to present it in a way that person can be able to accept it. Maybe you can read John 3.16 and ask the person, have you heard these words before? If they have not, it tells you a little of their church background or lack of their office. The question that what presents us from God, knowing God personally can be asked directly. Or second point, maybe if asking a question directly, be sure to do not respond to her or him in a way that indicates he or she is wrong. You think. And so we need to be careful as we share God's word with them, in fact, in a very proper way. And the first thing we need to make sure that we are presenting and preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to talk about the Lord, about the Bible. And we need to present the way that the Lord is the true way to be saved. See, Lord Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14 verse 6. If you want to help someone to be saved, the way is a, through a person, you say. The first issue is to how to help this person to touch the Lord. Don't tell any, him anything but bring him to the touch of the Lord. When the Lord touches or when he or she touches the Lord. You see everything is clear. The Lord is the way. So what you are doing is helping the person to touch the Lord. To gain the Lord. And to experience the Lord. And to see the Lord. Don't say anything else. You see Christ is the way. He is the life. He is the reality. All you need to do is to help him to touch Christ. When he or she receives and touches Christ. His spirit will be enlivened or his or her spirit will come alive. After that when you talk to him about spiritual things, he or she will understand. Then the way will be opened for the Lord to enlighten, enlighten him or her. And so please remember your task in the gospel is how to help the person to touch the Lord Jesus Christ as a person. Don't talk about any other thing. Nothing else but Christ. You just share about your faith in Christ. And you present Christ. Nothing else but Christ. See the Christ you present must be the living Christ. Not the Christ you know about in your head. Not the Christ that you read about in the Bible doctrinally. But the living Christ that you experience. You see never forget that it is not you that gets the person saved. You cannot get the person saved, you see. No way. It is the Lord, the Spirit that saves the person. The Holy Spirit that saves the person. The Lord must be there. The Holy Spirit must be there. I repeat, first you have to bring the person in touch with Christ. Secondly, it is the Holy Spirit that gets the person saved, not you. You are but an instrument. It is the Holy Spirit that enlightens the person. It is the Holy Spirit that gives life. It is the Holy Spirit that works. You do not work. 
you do not get a person saved. You are just a channel. You are the means through whom the Holy Spirit works. And so keeping this kind of an attitude or motive is very, very important. Secondly, take care of the Holy Spirit, you see. Take care of the Holy Spirit. This means that you must be in the Spirit and take care of the Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit and your Spirit are one. So you must take care of your Spirit. By taking care of your spirit, you are taking care of the Holy Spirit. You see, in other words, during the whole process of preaching the gospel, you cannot offend the Holy Spirit and you cannot offend your spirit also. Why? Because the Holy Spirit must be there working. The Holy Spirit must be there, but the Holy Spirit is very sensitive, extremely sensitive. The Holy Spirit must be there. So you must take care of the Holy Spirit and take care of your spirit also. Otherwise you are wasting time. If the Holy Spirit is not there, it doesn't work. Because it is the Holy Spirit that gives life. What do I mean when I say you cannot afford to offend the Holy Spirit? Suppose that while you are preaching the gospel, you look up and something distracts your eyes. This causes something else to go through your mind. This will offend both the Holy Spirit and your spirit. After that, when you try to speak, you have no power behind you. You can speak, but there is no life. There is no zip. There is no depth. What you speak is just empty words. There is no life. The Holy Spirit is not there. You can preach a marvelous gospel, but the person will not be saved. So what you sh should do about terrible and nonsensical thoughts that come? Before you speak, determine not to look anywhere else. Get your being ready before the Lord. Turn to your spirit and ask for forgiveness. Ask for the cleansing of the blood right then. And there, they control your eyes, control your mind, and control your heart. Sometimes in the middle of the speaking, you may get distracted. Quickly turn inside, turn right way. Ask for the cleansing quickly so that you do not offend the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, take care of the environment and the conversation. Take care of the environment and the conversation. The next thing to take care of is the environment. When you preach the gospel, you must provide a healthy environment. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive. For the Holy Spirit to work, there must not be distraction of any kind. For instance, if you are preaching to parents, then you should arrange for the children to be taken care of. If they are running around, there will be distraction. And it will be very difficult for the Holy Spirit to work. Of course, as you take care of the environment, you cannot be so formal. The Holy Spirit doesn't work that way either. It should be very informal and relaxed. But at the same time, very sober. Be relaxed, have a meal together, but... At the same time, take care of your spirit. The next thing to take care of is the conversation. The next thing is to take care of is the conversation. You need to control the speaking to bring it around to fit in the gospel. Of course, the unsaved person will not likely be asking about the gospel. Suppose you are talking to someone from Colombia or from India or from Africa or from any other nation. It will be very easy for him to talk about his own nation. Then you could ask if there are churches in their nation. He might have been talking about the warlords, but now you have to brought it around the churches. 
What kind of churches do you have? See what I mean about controlling the conversation? You could ask that they do what they do on Sunday. You can ask what they do on Sunday. Use something like that. It brings the conversation around in a very relaxed way. Then you can zero into the gospel. If there are other believers present, they should not interfere. But to be very exercised in prayer. The fourth thing is to take care of your intention. You see, take care of your in intention. You yourself need to take care of your own intention. You cannot be there just to catch him or her. A gospel preacher must love people. You must love that person and be concerned for him or her and for their soul. You do not want their soul, him or her to perish. So you are helping him or her to be saved. I'll give you an example. One of my patients had a heart attack when he was around say 40 years old. It was terrible. So medically speaking, I knew this. His days were numbered. He would, he would not live too longer. And that person might die. But inside I was considering that if he or she is not saved, then such a person would be passed away into suffering for eternity into hellfire. And so we need to be concerned for the soul of such a person. And so I was considering what should I do, you see. And so one evening, as I went around as a chaplain into the hospital, and there was no one else waiting, and it was very quiet and very relaxed, I began to speak to that person and began asking of his physical condition and how the person was feeling about and, and then we began to talk about how the person or anyone's life is so uncertain and as we started talking about the uncertainty of life that person began to realize that he or she may have to face God someday or sometime. And that opened up the whole conversation to talk about Jesus who said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have an eternal life, that God was Willing to give that person an eternal life. And whether that person was willing to receive eternal life. And so when the question of eternal life was presented, the person opened up and asked what he or she has to do to receive eternal life. And naturally, the hindrance the obstruction about sin was discussed and that can be removed through confessing it to the Lord and praying the prayer of repentance and forgiveness is received from the Lord right away and that from the Bible the assurance of getting eternal life is also received right away and presenting all these facts the person was so open to pray the prayer of repentance. And so there and there I prayed. And I helped that person. To pray the prayer of repentance. And to be forgiven of all sins. And to receive Lord Jesus. And to believe on Lord Jesus. And to receive eternal life. And salvation. 
in our Lord Jesus Christ. And after he was saved, he was so good, so nice to everyone, that everyone were surprised. Even he was surprised at himself because he had changed so much. It shows us that he was really saved. I am so happy that I preached the gospel and the person was saved. The next thing we need to do is being one with the Lord. Being one with the Lord. So I would remind you again that you must take care of your spirit. The Holy Spirit of God works through your spirit. Take care that there are no distractions outwardly or inwardly. Your mind must be clean and clear before, because the Lord needs to use your mind. If your mind is filthy and corrupt, how can the Lord use it? If a dirty thought comes, turn back to the Spirit right away. Ask the Lord's forgiveness and cleansing of His precious blood. You must control the whole situation because the gospel is the power of God. The authority of the gospel is the authority of Jesus Christ. You must exercise authority. You must be in control while sharing the gospel. When the person you are speaking to believes he is obeying the gospel. That is why you have to be very careful about what you do, what you say, what you think. About everything. You must be one with the Lord. In the spirit. Exercising the Lord's authority. This also means that you should never ask the person. What he would like to do. Tell him what to do. Never ask he would like to pray. More than likely he will say no. Never ask if he would like to be, get saved. You are in control. Tell him what to do and what to pray. This is very important. These are important things to keep in mind when preaching the gospel. The spirit, the environment, the conversation and your intention. Your whole being and your authority. The gospel is not so simple because you have to take care of all these things. You have to practice all these things until it becomes a part of you. What if a person refuses to pray? What if a person refuses to pray? If he or she refuses, stop. Don't make the person to get saved. You want him to receive the Lord. This is very wonderful. But if he or she doesn't want it, forget it. Invite the person to come to the Lord, but don't beg. The Lord's things are too high, too precious. Don't make them cheap. If you don't want his or the Lord's life, then you have to leave it. You must have this attitude. If you want it, I'll spend hours with you. But if you don't want it, then it's up to you. Second thing is what if they say, how about another time? How about another time? Well, you can say uh, uh, another time is okay. We can meet another time. But if he or she refuses or wants to argue, then there is no time to argue, you see. People never receive the Lord through an argument. Don't waste your time. Never argue and never fight. It's up to the person to receive the Lord. And that is why I say to you, you must be in control. They must obey the gospel and receive the Lord. The next thing the person may be that, what if the person prays with me? My concern is that if someone does what I ask them to eat, ask them to do, how do I know if it's real? Maybe I just intimidated him or her. Well, you can tell them not to do it to please you. Tell them 
don't do this to please me. When you pray with me, you must speak out of your heart. Your mouth and your heart are connected. Don't just speak through your mouth, but speak through your heart and your mouth. Make sure you tell them to open their heart. The main thing is their heart. Take care of your own heart and of course, you must be strong in the spirit. When I help someone to pray, I always tell him that I am opening my heart to him. I emphasize the word heart. I start to pray with one word, Lord. I ask them to repeat after me. When he or she repeats the word, Lord, he usually just says it. I tell him, no, that is not strong enough. You need to open your heart to the Lord. Repeat after me strongly, Lord, I open my heart to you. Help him to touch his spirit. Emphasize the word heart. Speaking in a strong way will help him to open his whole being to the Lord. Lord, receive. Lord, I receive you right now into my heart. Again, I emphasize the word heart as my life and my savior. Of course, you won't be able to get everyone saved the first time you try. If you can, all the better, but you may not be able to do. And so, you need to keep trying and speaking to that person. May God bless you as you try to bring a person to the Lord. And as you share your faith, may the Lord be with you, give you the necessary boldness and empowerment from the power of the Holy Spirit to declare your faith, to share your faith and help people to come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And to be saved for eternity. Isn't it a joy? It's a joy. To share our faith. To witness about our Lord. And, lo and to bring the lost souls into the kingdom of God. May God bless you.